Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to another episode of our Hajj uh, Legacy Conference. Tonight we are honored uh, to have with us my dear brother, Imam Omar Suleiman. Uh, welcome to the program, Dr. Suleiman. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to call me that. Uh, okay, we, had, we had a deal. We had a deal years ago that you'd never introduce me, in, so except as your brother, inshallah. Hayakallah, Sheikh Muhammad. Sheikh Omar Suleiman, you all know him. I don't need to introduce him. You know, the founder and the president of Yaqeen Institute. He's also a fellow Al Maghrib instructor as well. Uh, well known, uh, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless him. Tonight we have uh, Imam Omar with us to discuss. Uh, a very important topic. Uh, this particular season reminds us of, uh, of a story that was recorded in the Quran. Uh, in the Old Testament, there is a biblical version of it. Um, we were told by the Prophet وسلم, about some details of this particular story. It's the story of the sacrifice when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested uh, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Uh, with with a dream in which he saw that he uh, is to slaughter his son, and according to the Old Testament, his only son, which makes it uh, obvious that it, it could have not been anyone except Ismail alayhi salam. Regardless whether it's Ismail or Ishmael or Isaac, Ibrahim alayhi salam was uh, you know received this this vision, and you know the, the stories out there we are reminded of it around this time of the year as we prepare our Allahi. Uh, so Sheikh Omar, uh, you know, it's, it's a story, subhanAllah, that, that I myself, you know, whenever I read that portion of the Quran, and especially when I come to a particular verse uh, where Allah says, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا It just, it, it shakes me to my core. Um, so the story of the sacrifice, where do we begin? I think where, where we begin is the, uh, just the place of Islam, of submission, right? And so, uh, you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, I'm doing this series on, on the du'as of Ibrahim alayhi salam, and uh, I caught myself missing something, which is I was talking about how we invoke a salah ala Ibrahim wa salah ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every salah, but it's also wa ala Ali, right? The families of Ibrahim and the families of Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam ajma'in. So, um, I think that what's what's so beautiful about this entire family is the purest and most perfect expression of Islam in what it means. So there is submission on the part of Hajar, submission on the part of Ismail, and of course, submission on the part of Ibrahim. And Ibrahim has this great concern والسلام, for how he nurtures these ideals in his children, right? And so you find Ibrahim Islam's conversations with his children. You find Ibrahim's children's conversation with their children. Uh, and it's it's constant yeah. ta'kid. Like you are, ma ta'buduna min ba'di. What are you going to worship? Uh, keeping them on salah, keeping them on those things. And then you find the ijaba, you find the answer in the kids having those things. And so like Ismail alayhi salam, wa kana ya'muru ahlahu bis salah. Ismail was enjoining his family with prayer, right? We don't have the details of the conversation of Ismail with his children, but you can imagine Ismail Islam with his own family, teaching them salah, right? Uh, making sure that they pray, uh, keeping them upon those things. And so it's a story of submission all around. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's beautiful in so many different aspects. But I was just thinking about the, uh, the story, and I'll start with this place. If you realize what gave... Ibrahim alayhi salam, the reason to submit was that he saw a dream and the dreams of the prophets are wahi. And so he submitted himself to what he thought was a command of Allah. And so whether the command of Allah is when he's asleep or when he's awake, whether it is difficult or easy, whether he can understand it or not understand it, aslamt. If qala lahu rabbuhu aslam, qala aslam to rabbil alameen. He immediately yeah. submits himself to his Lord. But then look what's so beautiful. When Hajar uh, called out to Ibrahim alayhi salam. She asked him, did Allah command you to do this? Yeah. Not is there wisdom or hikmah. No, no. Did Allah command you to do this? And then what did Ismail alayhi salam say to his father in that image, by the way? Sheikh Muhammad knows, you know, today I was with my son all day. He was sick. You know, please make yeah. your out for his full shifa. He had a crazy allergic reaction. I was looking at him in the urgent care. And 
staring at him. And I was thinking about our talk tonight, like how much a father loves his son and how much Ibrahim, who made dua for Rabbi Habli min as oh Allah, grant me from the righteous. And he's looking at Ismail and he, he, he is his qurratu ayn, he is the coolness of his eyes, but now he's told to sacrifice him. And uh, when Ismail says to him, if'al ma tu'mar, do as you were commanded. <laughs> so all three of them, subhanAllah, all three of them has a, have a remarkable submission to the exact same thing, which is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once you know it's the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's no ifs and buts or whys. It's okay, that's that's it. I know uh, there's the yaqeen of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the certainty of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that something will come out of this. There's the yaqeen of Ismail alayhi salam, uh, sitting still. There's the yaqeen of Hajar running between Safa and Marwa. It's just certainty that the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never yield ruin in a person's life. And so what did it yield instead? Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, performs the sacrifice of an animal. And we all do you know, f- the, the same uh, ritual as the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now think about something cool, by the way. This is like an extra part that I, that I wished I would have said in my series. Ibrahim alayhi salam was going to sacrifice Ismail alayhi salam from who the, whom the descendants was who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ismail was spared, and it was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who would revive the sunnah of sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And so all of the Muslims sacrificing and uh, honoring the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way that Ibrahim alayhi salam honored the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of that is through the sun that he was going to sacrifice. <laughs> so look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplied the blessings for him. And that's what Allah Azza wa Jalla does for us when we sacrifice for him. Not only does he not yield loss for us, but he multiplies the reward for us in ways. Right? So the way out for Ibrahim alayhi salam was that it wasn't his son, but it was a ram. Right? Where did the sustenance of Ibrahim alayhi salam come from in the most expansive uh, sense uh, in so many different ways. You know, at the end of the ayat that speak about that that story in the vision, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna hadha lahu al mm. And and whenever I, I read that verse and I in, in the way it's uh, expressed in the Quran, it, it really makes you feel like Ibrahim alayhi salam has a history of being tested, right? I mean yeah. the Prophet sallallahu alayhi in the hadith told us that prophets and messengers are tested at a much higher level, at a different level, right? Uh, so Ibrahim goes from one trial to another, right? He's tested with his father, he's tested with his people, the king, on and on and on. And then this comes, but Allah Azza just says about this, you know, you know, I would like you, inshallah, to comment on this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this particular test, Inna hadha lahu al mubin. It's the ultimate you know, test and, and trial, you know, perhaps maybe you can shed some light on that. What makes this particular test of Ibrahim the, the, the greatest and the, in the, in the ultimate test? Well, and I'll, I'll reflect on it as opposed to interpret it per se. Um, you know, subhanAllah, when you go through a major test in life and then something happens that you interpret as the relief of that test, then to be tested with the relief of the test compounds the trauma altogether. So what does that mean? Ibrahim alayhi salam was already, you know, humiliated by his father, assassination plot on him, rejected by his people, turned away, and then life seems to be turning around for him when yeah, no child for some for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Long period without children. And then subhanAllah Allah Azza wa gives him this beautiful, submissive uh, sweet child in Ismail alayhi salam and he is his he's the coolness of his eyes he, lo- he looks at him and he loves him and he, he used to visit him uh, it was already painful enough for him to leave them in Mecca leave him. Mm-hmm. but now he's visiting them in Mecca and um, so Ismail alayhi salam was the relief right and so there's the test of having to sacrifice your son and then there is the test of being tested with what you thought was the relief to your test. Like, I thought this was the end of it all. You know, when you thought like you're at the end of your journey and something, the relief came 
And now after the, you know, the, 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 the relief came, <laughs> I've got to, I've, I've got to be tested again with that. Not only that, but, you know, subhanAllah, it's like, you know, he was given a child after not having a child for so long. Uh, the pain of having to carry out what he would have had to carry out. It's like, why, why even if, if he was a questioning one, but he's not a questioning one, right? But, you know, why be given a child in the first place if you're just going to have to sacrifice him, right? Like, what, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the, the, the reasoning for all this pain? But that wasn't Ibrahim A.S. Ibrahim A.S. was one who understood that uh, Allah Azza wa does not put anyone in needless pain. And so the sacrifice was not needless. And in his adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was just complete submission to it. So it's definitely, I mean, that test is one. And, and it's, it's, it's important to say no other prophet was given a test like that. No. Right? Like yeah. Anbiya were tested with being thrown out of their, um, you know, their, their, their villages by their people, humiliated by their families. Uh, Ya'qub alayhi salam was tested with Yusuf alayhi salam being taken from him. Mm. But to but com be commanded to take your own son, no one was given a test that we know of like Ibrahim alayhi salam. So it was a very unique uh, test that was given to him. Some of them witnessed the, the death of their own children, but none of them had to carry out the, the action itself of taking the life of his, of his own uh, you know, child. The Prophet Sallam, you know, lost six of his seven children in his lifetime, buried them all. The last of whom was, was actually, subhanAllah, named Ibrahim. Right. Right? And, and even then the Prophet Sallam felt the pain and, and when, when people, they, they saw the pain in the face of the Prophet Sallam and his expression and his tears. So it's a, as it is, the loss of a child is a very painful experience for any parent. But for him to be told to be the one to take it, right? Or actually, I mean, it doesn't say take the life. It says, in, you know, he saw a vision that in the Azbahuka, you know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never asked him to actually kill him. But, he, you, know, you know, Allah had his plan for him. But to Ibrahim at that moment knew mm -hmm. that his action will, may lead to, to that, right? He doesn't know what Allah has. Like he doesn't right. know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is planning for him, right? Actually, the, I need once, to, you're giving me an opening, yeah. Sheikh, to clarify yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, the most watched uh, video of, 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 of myself on YouTube is an interfaith dialogue I did in Dallas a few years ago. So alhamdulillah, we've had people take shahada. I mean, multiple people, alhamdulillah, that will actually reference that as their introduction to Islam. But I made that comment in passing in that interfaith dialogue. They said, well, Ibrahim wasn't actually commanded to kill he he just was carrying out what he saw in his vision it's a small subtle point uh and something so, so i actually had someone taking shahada a few weeks ago on zoom <laughs> and they asked the question they said what did you mean by that by the way i just wanted to know what you meant by that that was the only part that i didn't get what you said is submission to allah Azza ibrahim salam, wanted to mimic exactly what he saw in the dream but it wasn't a verbal command to to sacrifice ismail in the araf al manam this is what i saw and so i'm just going to i'm going to go through the exact motion because when allah commands ibrahim alayhisam to do something he puts his foot in the same spot that allah commands him to his hand on the same spot he does exactly as he's commanded and so he had trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it would proceed as allah saw fit but that but that's the islam of ibrahim alayhisam so that's a subtle point that I failed to clarify in that interfaith dialogue a few years ago. So now I clarify it here, inshallah, because you mentioned it. SubhanAllah. So, so now t tell me how, you know, you, know you, may, you may want to share some reflections on Ibrahim's approach to Ismail, because that's extraordinary, right? Ibrahim always, you know, is submissive. When, whenever Allah tells him to do something, he was quick to respond. This time, Ibra Ibrahim sees the vision Right, and I, as I said, it, it was not necessarily an explicit direct revelation, uh, I mean, command, but he saw in the dream and he is to carry out what he saw in his dream. So it's, it is a commandment, but not necessarily direct. So he goes and he doesn't just go, go grab Ismail and, and attempt to slaughter him, but he actually is having a dialogue, a conversation with him. And it just, I find that amazing. Yeah, and it's, it's a testimony you know, subhanAllah to Ismail alayhi salam as well, right? Like Ismail alayhi salam could have made that so much harder for Ibrahim <laughs> alayhi salam, right? Uh, but, but he's immediately, um, you know, 
uh, he says, "If'al ma tu'mar," and what and what what the what the narration suggests is that Ibrahim Aisam did not talk to Hajar alayhi salam about it. This is like a father son, like, "Hey, listen, this is what I saw last night, and uh, what should I do?" Right. So, what's what's my course? What do you think I should do? Right. Because I want to carry out that uh, that that course of action. And Ismail alayhi salam, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Inna hu kana sadiq al wa'id wa kana rasul al nabiya." SubhanAllah, so when in Surah Maryam, where Allah is talking about the virtues of the prophets, uh, you know, and Allah Azza wa Jal goes, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ Musa, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِسْمَعِ Idris, all, all of them, right? He starts to go through the different uh, prophets as he mentions them. He'll mention a defining feature of them. Uh, with Ismail alayhi salam, إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعَدِ He was truthful to his promise. When he told his father that you will find me to be amongst those who are steadfast, patient, because it's the command of Allah. And uh, I, you know, it, it also speaks to, I think, the fact that, you know, Ismail alayhi salam could have questioned, like, you know, when, when he got to a point where, where he had his faculties to understand what was going on around him, like, why am I here in the middle of a desert? And I have, you know, my, the, the rest of another branch of my family, maybe that's, uh, that, that's flourishing somewhere else. What 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 happened here? But that was but but Ismail was the answer to a du'a, and so he was nurtured with the qualities of Ibrahim alayhi salam and what Ibrahim alayhi salam sought in a child. So uh, I I um you know I, a whole I, I, a whole civilization was built around him. Yeah, uh, you know he became the father of a nation, a great nation. Yeah. So, yeah. So now it's yeah. If you compare the tribe of Jurham to yeah what's flourishing in Palestine at the time, right? It's different, right? And and he's, you know, Ishaq alayhi salam has Ya'qub alayhi salam and Ya'qub, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam lives long enough to to have the companionship of Ya'qub alayhi salam too. So it's like, it, though it's it's a, a tribe and it's, it's a, a civilization that's settling around him at the time, what he saw in his lifetime was much more limited in scope than what was happening on the other side, right? So it's just, it's just a beautiful um, a testimony to Ismail alayhi salam. And that's a lesson in da'wah, by the way, that, that Sheikh Salah actually mentioned one time uh, about being satisfied with your with your uh, allotment in da'wah, right? So Allah Azza wa Jal gives you this group or gives you this role, take your role. Like Ismail alayhi salam took his role and instructed his family with Salah and dealt well with his people. And he didn't think, you know, well, maybe I should go this way now and that way. No, it was this is what Allah has instructed me to do, and this is where I'm staying. I'm staying. I'm staying here and doing what Allah has commanded me to do. You know, Subhanallah, there's something very interesting that I, I didn't really pay attention to. I mean, you know, sometimes you hear it, but it doesn't register. It doesn't hit you until I heard. Uh, you know, I was listening to um, a clip. Uh, you know. From, uh, of of uh, Sheikh Saeed Al Kamali, Habibullah uh, yeah. speaking, and he comments on this statement of Ismail, his response to his father. First of all, by the way, this is this has been obviously Ismail realizes, and Ismail is intelligent, and he's a prophet, and he's intelligent, and he realizes that this this is a command from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So he says, "If alma tu'mar, do as you're commanded to do." Satajiduni, insha'Allah, min al-sabirin. He says that I will be patient, but he doesn't only say, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to show you, you know, how patient and how enduring I am, or how strong I am, or how brave I am. He actually says, insha'Allah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. But it wasn't it wasn't the type of insha'Allah we use, right? It's <laughs> no, no. I mean, it just it feels like the, the, just the level of adab, you know. And and yeah. he doesn't forget at that moment to say insha'Allah, you know. Mm-hmm. Even in 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 that kind of context, um, subhanallah. So falamma aslama wa tallahu lil jabin, you know. Allah subhanahu wa taala said when they both submitted, huh? so it, it seems that it was a test for actually both the father and the son. Now, when I know Ibrahim Qasadakta you have fulfilled, uh, you know, the, the, the dream. Now, now, in, you know, can you comment on uh, the story that the Prophet said in the Hadith? And I was sorry, Subhanallah, I was trying to find the the the, the exact narration that the Prophet said. And Abdul Dabihain, something to that effect. Yeah. So the Prophet Sallallahu was obviously, uh, you know, and, and I think. It's important to, for me to word this properly. 
Yeah. What was the Prophet Sallallahu was always destined, and we were a destiny of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as as an as his Ummah bidna Allahi Taala. But the fact that uh, his that, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is this is the child of uh, of Abdullah, who was uh, you know at least chosen for for slaughter in something not as noble uh, within you know within, within a custom of the time. Whereas, you know, his, his obviously his great ancestor and Ismail alayhi salam was also chosen for that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed otherwise. And I think there's something powerful about that, that, um, you know, that, that what Allah has decreed will happen, uh, no matter what is, no matter what plans are put into motion, what Allah Azza wa has planned will overcome those plans. And so the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, right, is saying it that way, um, it, it's very powerful uh, because he he alayhi salatu wasalam, is unlikely in regards to the worldly scope of things. But uh, what Allah Azza wa has destined was going to happen no matter what. No matter what, yeah. Yeah, yeah subhanAllah. Uh, Sheikh Omar, um, you know, now we commemorate this particular, uh, you know, event by actually getting a ram or a lamb or, you know, whatever a suitable uh, and affordable animal we have and offer it as a sacrifice. And, and on the greatest day of the entire year with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yawm al You know, subhanAllah, last year, uh, you and I uh, met last year and the year before when you were with your honorable father and the year before, right? On the eve of that, of that, of that day this year, uh, we're not there, you know, we're meeting virtually. And subhanAllah, you know, seeing the images today of, of the haram mm. with the few chosen people who, who made it was, uh, was an emotional moment for me. How, how do you feel about this whole thing? <laughs> Maybe in a long time, this is, in a long time, you have to do your qurbani here. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't remember, subhanAllah, so for, for me, and that's the thing, it's like, you know, when they say first world problems, uh, this yeah. is like uh, uh, Sheikh problems, right? Like, like you know, <laughs> like oh, you know, poor you. You've only been to Hajj this many times, and you have to stay put, right? So may Allah facilitate it for everyone that intended this year, uh, give them a full Hajj mabrur. Um, so for me personally, this will be my first time not being in Hajj for over a decade. Um, so I, I don't remember what it's like to not like. I used to joke with people about like the, the Eid sightings and stuff like that. I'm like, that's a fight. That's a moon fight. I'll never have to have, inshallah, you know, because I'll always be in Hajj when Eid al-Adha, when the debates are here about Eid al-Adha and, you know, when, when, when it's going to be and things of that sort. Uh, no, but I can tell you that, that it's, it, it has been, been very emotionally uh, uh, taxing. And, and, you know, it's not, again, I, it, this is like first world problems, third world problems. Like, you know, uh, it, Hajj is addicting. It really is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Medina, the, the city of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, you know, every night uh, when, when Khadija, my, when my daughter goes to sleep, she, she watches Ya Taiba, that's her favorite nasheed. So like now, like I'm hearing that, that nasheed and it's just, it's eating me up on the inside, you know, uh, because I'm thinking about like right now, I would have been praying this salah in, uh, at, on this day in this masjid, right? Like I would have been in Masjid Nabawi. Oh, this would have been happening. Oh. Like I go through my lecture notes, I'm like, I would have been giving this lecture in Aziziyah, it's the sixth of the Hijjah. I would have been doing this, this. So I'm like going through all of the different things. In fact, I was talking to Abu Isa. And we were talking about the, 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 Mina, can, the Mina conference, so, uh, always on Yom Tarwiya, the eighth day. Uh, Sheikh up, yeah. we, we, we do the, the, uh, the Mina conference, uh, you know, for the Hijjah, preparing them for the day of Arafah. So it's difficult, but um, I'll share with you something, um, subhanAllah, that a lot of people don't know about Malcolm X and Hajj Medica Shabazz, rahimahullah ta'ala. So Hajj Medica Shabazz wrote a lot, Malcolm wrote a lot in his diary about how he felt unworthy. Uh, so there's actually a lot, some in his autobiography, some in his diary where he's talking about how I think I'm the first American to make Hajj. And I don't know why Allah would have chosen me for this. And, and I, I can't imagine uh, being so privileged. And Malcolm actually has an entry in his diary, I talk about this in, in some of the classes I teach on Malcolm. Uh, I read this entry from his diary where he talks about, he said, a lot of people seem to be here just to be seen. And he said, and I thought about a man in India with a picture of the Kaaba on his wall. 
and crying and Allah washing away his sins as he sees a picture of the Kaaba on his wall. Like Malcolm was actually reflecting that someone's heart could be there even though they never get to go there. Their heart can be there and Allah can forgive them. And he was saying, here I am. I feel privileged to be here. But I thought about that man uh, in India that has never had that opportunity, you know? And, and so Malcolm reflected on that. Malcolm went to Hajj, but with his sister's money, Ella Collins. He talked to Ella Collins who became Sunni before him a few years before in 1959. She actually became Sunni in Boston. And she said, you know, I'd been saving up for Hajj my, to, be, to go to Hajj myself, but you, you should go. So she gave him her Hajj money and he went to Hajj and then he fell in love with it. So you know what? Malcolm went to Umrah in September, <laughs> but no media, no press. Uh, shut the cameras, no, no correspondence. He spent some time in Umrah in September and he was planning Rahimahullah Ta'ala to do Hajj again in 1965. But he was assassinated uh, just a month and a half uh, before Hajj in 1965, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. So it's, it's, it, 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 it grabs you. It really grabs you. Like you want to go back, you want to go back, you want to go back. And we've been so privileged, um, you know, alhamdulillah, to have that opportunity to go so many years. So I, I thank Allah for that. But also to those that have never been able to go, if you longed for it and you were sincere in your intention for it, uh, you know, you may, be, you, you may be, inshallah, amongst those who have had it written down for you uh, completely. Yeah. You know, I just I just remembered when I ran into you in the tunnel uh, last year, <laughs> the year before it was in Arafah, right, with your father, subhanAllah. We just, we kept running into each other over the past three years in different places, subhanAllah. Post Arafah hug. Uh, yeah, subhanAllah. So when you finish Arafah, it's like um, uh, everyone will just hug each other and it, it just feels like, it, you know, it, it really, it, it, it almost feels like, you know, you made it. Right. Like, you know, like, like there's such a, a sense of, uh, of forgiveness. Like you felt the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like, okay, we made it. It's uh, sometimes almost hard, like to do some of the other things that come from Hajj after Arafah because Arafah is just the peak. It's your, it's your, your spiritual high. You're like, I made it. And so typically when the sun sets, people will hug, people will cry on each other's shoulders. And, uh, yeah, I remember seeing you, um, as we were waiting, uh, to, 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 to board, uh, right after Arafah. Um, and giving you a really big hug. May Allah allow that to uh, to happen. Yeah, I again. think in, in 2016 we uh, we didn't meet in Hajj. We actually met at the hub uh, as we were taking our connection flight yeah. in Doha. Yeah, to, and then the, the following three years uh, we we met in in Hajj. This year, Subhanallah, neither you or I are are there. Where you know, I wrote about that, and that's actually, subhanAllah, a lot of imams uh, don't see each other except in hajj. Like, hajj is actually a gathering of uh, imma as well, from around the world. Uh, alhamdulillah, we see each other outside of hajj as well. Um, but a lot of people like you only see them in hajj. And in fact, uh, in front of the most Sometimes in the least, Muslim. sometimes in the least expected, you know, place, right? You run into yes. someone, subhanAllah, yeah. Yeah, there's some mashaykh I, I, I caught in Jamarat for the first time. Like I saw them stoning in Jamarat. I'm like, how in the world in the midst of all of this, what are the chances that I'm going to be shoved and like I look to my left and there's this 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 sheikh who's here uh, that, that I've always wanted to meet. And uh, he's just right there just stoning uh, the Jamarat. And a lot of times it's in front of the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Like I feel like in Medina, uh, everyone just ends up bumping into each other. And there are a lot of, you know, people that had hard feelings for each other, but like they bumped into each other in front of the message of the Prophet Sallallahu and all was gone. You know, like it's it's a special place for us to meet. Um, and uh, I ask Allah to gather us in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, I, I want to go back to the story of the sacrifice and, and just focus on this concept of sacrifice, because even as we were having this conversation, you know, perhaps one of the one of the missing elements this year for those of us who are used to you know going there very often is actually this Hajj was our opportunity to actually you know to to, to give to serve right especially those who are in the in the, in the in the service of the Hajj our opportunity to uh, you know just to be like everyone else and and to serve the the guests of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and practice. Uh, you know, some level of sacrifice. Obviously, it cannot be compared to 
what our ancestors or our great predecessors, you know, contributed, right? The country of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions, or even Prophet Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam. Um, if you can just share like a word of advice, uh, you know, of our community members, uh, you know, th this idea of really coming out of our comfort zone and, and, and being, and, and, you know, being able to actually give and sacrifice something for the sake of Allah, uh, you know, for the sake of our, you know, fellow humans uh, that may be in distress, right? It, it seems like this religion is, is a religion that was founded upon this concept of, you know, sacrifice. Yeah, I, SubhanAllah, there's something very beautiful that both of their Eids um, involve people eating that typically don't eat, right? Eid al-Fitr, mm -hmm. Zakat al-Fitr. Uh, what would be the point of Ramadan, of all of us going through this exercise of hunger, if at the end of it, we leave the hungry hungry, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Zakat al-Fitr uh, and this idea that people should eat on that day and, and the purest uh, distribution of Zakat al-Fitr is actually in food, right? In, in items of food, staples of food, uh, which of course now is usually just dispersed financially. Um, so Zakat al-Fitr, everyone eats, right? And uh, Eid al-Adha, I think that people underestimate um, how meaningful it is that there are people that eat meat, that eats, like have their proper nutrition uh, for weeks or months out of the Udhiyah that do not eat properly for the rest of the year. And I've witnessed some of those populations myself, like people that will save the Qurbani meat, uh, the Udhiyah meat, and they will make use of it for, for so long. So I'll, I'll just encourage everyone. And by the way, you don't just have to do one Qurbani. You can do more. Mm -hmm. You have a disparent or someone that's beloved to you, uh, put forth another qurbani if you can. You can put forth multiple qurbanis. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's extremely meaningful. Um, and there's forgiveness in every one of the hairs on the animals that are sacrificed and all of the meat that is distributed and people are able to eat with an eye ta'ana. There's, there's, there's something great about that. And uh, I'll, I'll just, you know, I think just put forth this idea that, look, connect to this idea that uh, the upper hand is better than the lower hand. The upper hand is the giving hand. The lower hand is the receiving hand. Just as some people anticipate the time where they can eat from the Udhiyah, anticipate the time that you can put it forward. Um, that Allah has blessed you to be amongst those that can actually put forth a sacrifice rather than waiting to receive the sacrifice. Because those that receive the sacrifice receive it in this world. And those that put it forth receive it in the hereafter. And so the reward of it will be waiting for, for you in the night ta'ala. So, you know, look forward to it and be grateful to Allah Azza wa that he gave you the opportunity to, to be a part of putting forth the sacrifice. Do you have any recommendation as to, you know, where people should, um, you know, I used, I used to encourage, uh, you know, again, obviously over the past few years, we've been in Hajj, so we don't really get to interact. But whenever people ask me, I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed blessed us right we're in the you know top top like the average household here here in america is richer than more than seven you know 97 point something percent of the world's population so i used to tell people i i love for the individual to experience it themselves you know and go go slaughter the animal and go through the process yourself but also if you can afford you know to do a, another one you know maybe somewhere where it's needed exactly. You know, let's say in Yemen or in exactly. uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, somewhere where where you know people may may appreciate that gift. Uh, so, do you have any recommendation? I mean, obviously, you now this year a lot of people are saying, with the social distancing, you know, it may not be uh, feasible for for many people to go and do it themselves. So, do you have yeah, any recommendations? So that's, that's definitely a complication. So, I'll answer it away from the complication. Just yeah. Uh, how I would conceive it, because I think there are st still some trustworthy people that can offer the udhiyah here and, and distribute it here. The general rule, right, is that those that are closer to you are more deserving of your of your charity, but it shouldn't be an either or. Uh, it should be both, inshallah ta'ala. And so if you have the ability to do a qurbani locally and then a qurbani in one of the, the, the truly, you know, some one of the distressed uh, places in the world like Yemen or Somalia, uh, or, or so many different places, right, that, that, that we can think of in Syria, uh, Palestine, um, you know, 
with with some of the, the Rohingya population that are in Bangladesh right now, and you know that, that are the, the refugee camps there. There's so many opportunities within Nai Tai. Um, if you can if you can offer uh, one locally and one internationally, that's I think that's there's a lot of height in that within Nai Tai. And I know you know some of the the organizations, um, like I know. Uh, you know some of the organizations. I don't Please want to name feel them. free. I no no. I want you. I, I feel because I know I was gonna ask you about this. I know that you had a plan this year after Hajj to go and visit some refugee camps, and there were people, individuals, and couples who were so excited. As a matter of fact, you know, I, you know, I remember uh, recommending to some people saying that if you want, you know, a Hajj to remember, and if you want to participate in these activities, Sheikh Omar Suleiman, you know, is is your guy. So. Um, so, uh, and I know that you, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, you've been to different places. So maybe you can share with us something, something from your own personal experience, you know, so, so people understand that their contribution or their sacrifices are actually, they, they mean a lot. They can, they can go a long way, uh, you know, for some people. Yeah. You know, mashallah, I'm not just saying this to be diplomatic. Like I'm, I'm very proud of, of, of many of the Muslim organizations that are out there. And so. I'll, I'll endorse their work with, with a full heart sometimes. And so uh, whether it's uh, it's helping hand that I would go with uh, to the refugee camps, Amoud Foundation, I was actually planning to go to uh, to, to Somalia, Sheikh Mohammed in April. I, I don't think you even knew that, <laughs> but I was going to no, go to Amoud either. Foundation in yeah. April uh, to Somalia. Uh, so Amoud does wonderful work. Pure Hands does wonderful work in Yemen. Uh, Islamic Relief does wonderful work, mashallah, everywhere. Um, and locally, uh, you know, I, I'm biased towards Ikhna Relief because I used to work for Ikhna Relief too, and I've seen their great work uh, up front as well. Alhamdulillah, but I mean, so. So how have, you, have you ever, have you ever experienced experience yourself, let's say, distribution of uh, Qurbani or Udhiyah meat anywhere uh, that <laughs> yeah, you can and, share with us? Yeah, yeah, in Jordan. Uh, so you in know, Jordan. my 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 father-in-law who is. Uh, who is, uh, you know, one of my, my teachers, and and he's also a, he he also likes he, he does slaughter he does the the, the he, he he slaughters the animals as well so they'll actually slaughter in Jordan and distribute to the refugee camps and to some of the fuqarat there. You have large Palestinian refugee camps and Syrian refugee camp there in Jordan. So, yeah, I, I've never witnessed the slaughter because I'm I'm, I'm usually in Hajj. So. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, but subhanAllah, the distribution or the delivery of the goods, yeah. you know, sometimes. The reaction that you see on the faces of the recipients, it's just how it makes you uh, yeah. realize that. Domestically, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, so that mm. was a year I didn't go to Hajj, 2005, uh, when Hurricane Katrina hit. And Hurricane Katrina hit in August of 2005. So Ramadan was not too long after that. And then Hajj that year, like I remember actually distributing in, in bags, the Uthiyah meat and the happiness on people's faces uh, after Hurricane Katrina. Yeah, it's just amazing, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for all the great work that you're doing, inshallah oh, ta'ala. Sheikh, um, before we conclude, inshallah, we're coming, we're approaching the end of our program. Uh, I need a couple of favors from you. Favor number one is people are getting really uh, tired, right, with this particular test, right? I mean, I still tell my, my family members, I tell a lot of my friends that, yes, we are being tested this, you know, pandemic and this, um, you know, very extraordinary circumstance that we're in is, is strange, uh, you know, and some of our freedoms are, are being restricted. But nonetheless, we're, we're better off than many people who may not have, we're so privileged still, so what word of advice do you have, you know, for those of us uh, who are just getting tired, this is taking a long time. We thought, you know, summer is gonna take care of it. We, we thought we're gonna go back to normal. Now we're being told that normalcy may not be something like in the foreseeable future, you know, this might be the way we may have to live for some time now. So what word of advice do you have for us? So, um, you know, SubhanAllah actually wrote an article about this that inshallah should be out tomorrow, day after. I was, I was reflecting on Ibrahim Islam and how I feel like this year we're connecting to him in a very different way, which is connecting to how to deal with disappointment. 
right? So Ibrahim alayhi salam, the delays and the du'as the, the being answered or the ways that they're being answered and the time and uh, that can be mentally and emotionally very exhausting, but uh, we're, we're learning that, that idea of how to be patient with Allah's plan and let it unfold. Um, so I think first and foremost, it, it's natural. Uh, and and I, I can, you know, I don't want to be super, pretend to be Superman here. Like, no, there are days that I'm struggling, you know, like it, it's tough. It is very exhausting sometimes to, to feel, uh, you know, like, okay, how much longer is this going to be? Are we going to get out there? And then you obviously anchor yourself back in gratitude to Allah for the privilege that you know that you have. Uh, but, you know, everyone is, is uniquely tested in certain ways. And uh, it's important for us to uh, embrace what we've been tested with um, and to, uh, you know, to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but, but not just the light at the end of the tunnel, but the light the light on the sides of the tunnel too. You know, they always they see the light at the end of the tunnel. There are these little bright lights that are hiding as well. Sometimes if you pay close enough attention that are already there. And I think it's important for us to think about the unique blessings that are, uh, are, are unveiling themselves to us in these times. And so whether that is uh, learning to cope with uh, isolation and turn it into seclusion, or whether that's reconnecting with family or whether that's, uh, you know, uh, rethinking purpose, or whether that's the ability to find introspection, or whether that's gaining, you know, some, some, something of the Quran, or whether it is, uh, you know, uh, learning to pray to rak'ahs of Qiyam al-Layl, or getting witr, just those are all things, inshallah ta'ala, that are bright lights that we have. So there are unique opportunities. So focus on the unique opportunities because when you look back with the night time, if you gain some, some good habits in this unique time that outlive this time, inshallah ta'ala, when you look back and you will look back, inshallah, whether you're, you're looking back uh, from a further place in the dunya or whether we're looking back from the akhirah, when we look back with the night time, then we'll find it as a time of joy if we converted it into uh, unique potential. And so it's okay to be down sometimes, except your down days. Uh, it's okay to sometimes feel, you know, like, like you're not in the best of moods because of the situation that you're in, but anchor yourself back in that great sense of purpose within Aitana and gratitude increases. Gratitude increases. What uh, The Prophet uh, Allah says, if you're grateful, then I'll increase you. When the Prophet used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his uh, his house uh, wasya, uh, to make it expansive. The Prophet ﷺ was not talking about square footage. Okay, it's 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 greater than that. That a person finds expanse even in in in, in tight situations because they're connecting to the unlimited. They're connecting to the infinite Allah Azza wa Jalla. So by the night Ta'ala, we connect to Him, and whether it's tight spaces or tight situations, we find expanse in those tight situations and tight spaces. Exactly. That's beautiful. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, before we come to the conclusion of this episode, I would like to remind all of you that tomorrow is the finale. We have our uh, final episode with Imam Suhaib Webb, inshallah, same time, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 Central uh, Memphis Time, uh, 7 uh, p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time or Pacific whatever <laughs> See, if only uh, the Californians but, you know, care about Pacific. I know. You I feel know. like you, you owe it to them. No, we, right? ha we have people that we love in Seattle as well. <laughs> <laughs> and in Portland. May Allah bring peace to Portland. Uh, uh, so please don't forget, inshallah, tomorrow, Chef Suhaib and I will be talking about the farewell uh, speech and pilgrimage of the Prophet. Wasallam. So join us for that, inshallah. Ta Imam Umar Sulaiman, Jazakallah Khairan. We have the habit. Uh, or we, the tradition of asking our speaker or our, our guest uh, to make dua for uh, you know, our community members, for the viewers out there. There are many people out there that are suffering of various symptoms or they may have some hardship in their lives, whether it's financial or otherwise. Inshallah, mm -hmm. so if you can make dua, inshallah, for all of us, we would really appreciate it. Bye, bye, bye. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتبع علينا أنت التواب الرحيم 
اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين اللهم اصلح أمين. احوال اخواننا المنكوبين في كل مكان أمين. اللهم عز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والكاذبين ودمر اعداء الدين أمين. اللهم انصر اخواننا المستضعفين في مشارق الارض مغاربها اللهم انصر اخواننا المستضعفين في مشارق الارض مغاربها ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب ربنا انك جامع الناس ليوم لا ريب فيه ان الله لا يخلف الميعاد اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك oh Allah we ask you to have mercy on us to make our hearts firm on your path to accept our deeds to forgive our shortcomings to keep us always sincere and steadfast we ask you to send your peace and blessings upon our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to join us with him with the prophets with the martyrs with the truthful with the righteous and the highest level jannah firdaus Allahumma ameen wa sallallahu wa sallam barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Imam Umar, a shout out to your son Abdullah ibn Umar, my dear Abdullah, may Allah bless him, inshallah, and may he uh, recover, inshallah ta'ala. Please also convey my salam to your beautiful daughters. Uh, may he send Adida. salam to me. Inshallah ta'ala. <laughs> well, I mean, many people out there may not know that Umar, Umar and I have a lot in common. Uh, you know, we're almost the same height. He's a little taller than me, <laughs> inshallah, but we, we have two children that are that have the same names mashallah right, okay, cool. uh, and and their mother mashallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her and congratulations on her masters inshallah exactly. please give give my salam to your honorable doctor you know the father dr ahmed sulaiman well, yeah. jamal inshallah ta'ala kul am wa antum bi khair jazakallahu khairan for joining us assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh